Hello everyone. We have come to the fifth week of the course and uh, for this week we will talk about probability and in this first video I will discuss about the rules of probability and after discussing rules of probability I will uh, give you some examples on applying the rules. And after uh, rules of probability, uh, the other topic is the bias theorem and uh, a bit explanation about uh, the use of a contingency table. Okay, so let's just start. From the properties of probability, the sum of the probability of any list of mutually exclusive and exhaustive event equals to 1. Event A and event A complement are mutually exclusive events, as shown in the Venn diagram. Thus, probability of A plus probability of A complement is equal to 1. And by rearranging, we have probability of A complement is just 1 minus probability of A. So, this is the complement rule. The addition rule allow us to find the probability of the union of two or more events. So if we have two events A and B, and we would like to know the probability that either A occurs or B, the probability at least A or B to occur, the statement will be symbolized as follow. Thus, the probability of at least A or B to occur, if A and B are not mutually exclusive, exhaustive, the formula is as follow. But if the event A and B are mutually exhaustive, then the probability that either A occurs or B is as follow. A conditional probability is when two events A and B happen, then the conditional event could be expressed as event B occur if event A has occurred. Event B occur given event A has occurred. Event B occur prior event A has occurred. Then the conditional probability is stated as a symbol as follows. Here we use A as the prior event and event B only happen after event A has occurred. Compare with a standalone probability where the event does not need any prior event to happen. This event is known as unconditional event and the probability is unconditional probability. The Venn diagram of a conditional probability as shown as follow where event A happened first, then followed by event B. The formula that probability B occurs given that A has occurred, where, or in other words, B condition on A is as follow. Since P, B conditional to A, so this is read as P, B, conditional to A, represent the probability of B, conditional on A. The original sample space S reduces to only A. The conditional probability P, B, condition to A is based on the portion of the P, that is included in A. It is derived as the ratio of the probability of the intersection of A and B to the probability of A. But if B is the prior event, then the probability of event A prior event B has occurred is as follow. It is important that we write the event that has already occurred after the vertical mark here. So this is A after B has occurred and this is B after A has occurred. 
where this un this conditional event is not the same with this conditional event. That is why we have to pay attention that the condition, the prior event, is written after this vertical mark. Since the most since in most instances PA condition to B is not equal to PB condition to A. However, there are some condition. Here, if A exerts no influence on PB condition to A, then we can say that PB condition to A is just equal to PB. Or, in the other way around, B does not affect the condition PA um, condition to B, then PA condition to B is just equal to PA. This is an independent event. So if A exert no influence to this conditional event and B exerts no influence to this conditional event, it is an independent event. But if the prior event has a effect to the next event then it's a conditional probability now let's discuss about the joint probability we use multiplication rule for joint probability so if we have two events a and b and we want to find the joint probability of the two events the statement would be expressed as two events a and b occur together both A and B occur. The statement will be symbolized as follow. To find the probability, we know from the conditional probability formula that P A condition to B is P A the, the ratio of intersection P A and B to P B. Thus, the joint probability is obtained by rearranging the formula from the conditional probability formula. So as we can see here, we, we want to know the, the joint probability is PA intersection to B. This, this is joint probability. So we just rearrange it. PA, the joint probability is just equal to PA conditional to B times PB. But, uh, or uh, if the B is uh, the, sorry, if the A is the uh, prior event, thus PB, PB condition to A times PA equals to the joint uh, probability. Now, if our two events A and B are independent, it implies uh, that PA condition to PB is equal to A and PB condition to A is equal to PB, just like what we have uh, discussed before. So the joint probability of two independent events are uh, PA times PB for both because we know that here it's just equal to B, yeah, as shown in this formula. And this one is, uh, is this one is just equal to PB. Sorry, this one PAB is just equal to PA because B does not have effect to A. So this is for, for an independent event, this is PA and this is just PB.